All right, ladies and gents, in today's video, I get a lot of questions about this, so it's long overdue, but uh, here's a uh, how to catch fish up in the Eastern Sierras video. I'm going to go over uh, where to go, what to use, um, and, and exactly what I do when I'm up there to, uh, to get on those fish. Uh, if you like what you're seeing here, uh, make sure you leave a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out uh, uh, gauge uh, that I'm putting out good content for you all. And stay tuned to the very end. I'm going to do an outro and wrap all this up. So let's see what we can learn. I guess we, we should start with the biggest question is is uh, what is the big difference between the Sierras and, and fishing down here local and and honestly uh, uh, and this is what I tell much most, most people when they ask me is there's not much difference uh, they're still the same trout there are different uh, species of trout up there like there's there's uh, browns brooks and uh, uh, cutthroats up there um, uh, but those are in the minority you're usually going to be going after uh, stocked rainbow trout um, there, there aren't very many native species up there uh, anymore. It's, it's, uh, they have what's, what's more considered wild. So basically their uh, parents were stocked and they, they bred and some of the fish were born in those streams, but they, they were not from uh, lines that were originally there, if, <laughs> if that makes sense. The biggest difference is uh, really water clarity. Um, uh, up there, you're up in the high, high mountains. There's a lot of rock and trees, uh, streams. Uh, so the water gets filtered out a lot, um, so the water's just very, very clear. As opposed to here in Southern California, we have a lot of murky conditions. But the trout are still the same trout. The, the rainbows up there are exactly the same as the rainbows down here. Um, the only difference is, is, is they're in clear water. So, so basically, the only difference that we're fishing is, is clear water conditions. That's it. Still the same fish. So they're going to bite the same things they bite down here just a bit differently and I'll get into that. Now rods and reels, um, uh, you're going to use the same stuff you use down here. Use an ultralight rod, um, uh, six to eight foot with uh, probably two to four pound test and, and a thousand series spinning reel and that's about it. Um, the only difference is uh, uh, if you want uh, you're going to be fishing a lot of the creeks and the streams up there instead of the lakes. You can get a smaller rod like I have uh, this one here. Um, this is a five foot rod uh, that I used to use up in the up in the creeks up there with a with a uh, 500 series uh, Shimano. Uh, I think it's a Sienna. Yeah, Sienna reel. Uh, I got four pound test on here um, and, and this is a, a real basic setup. It's 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 not high end. It's it's probably total probably 60 bucks for the rod and the reel. Um, and this is something when I'm fishing the creeks, I'll take with me because it's easier with a shorter rod to walk through the trees and the bushes to get back into some of those coves and, and spots where the fish are, are, are hiding up at. And, and also with the creeks and the streams, you just don't need to cast this fire. You're usually doing a lot of underhand casting uh, just across the, the, the creek and, and working your way, uh, your bait through the current. Um, so this is, this is an option too. But if, if you have your regular uh, lake rods, those will work too. Um, no problem. Uh, it just might be a little bit more difficult to get through the, the brush and the, and the trees back there. You have to be real mindful of your rod tip. Now another big question I get is, uh, do, uh, do you need uh, waders and a float tube to, uh, to fish out there? And the answer is no, you don't, but it helps. <laughs> um, uh, uh, you don't have to have waders. Um, I fished uh, for years out there without waders. Um, now that I have waders, um, I don't go without them. So uh, you can get the job done without them, but it really helps. It helps uh, getting out to spots where you can't normally access without getting wet. Um, uh, especially this time of year with all the snowfall and the runoff we've got. Um, uh, a lot of uh, shore fishing spots are underwater now and uh, they're all the way up to the trees. But if you have waders on, you could walk out there beyond the trees and fish. So um, uh, they're important in, in those times. Um, a float tube or a kayak is also really important, especially if you go up to the Sierra's in the middle of summer, you know, late July, August when it's real hot. 
Um, a float tube or a kayak or, or if you rent a boat will definitely help because those trout are going to go out a little bit deeper uh, and might be out of reach uh, sometimes of uh, shore fishing at some of the lakes that aren't very deep. But when you're looking at waders, um, uh, you don't have to buy, like I have, I have some of the um, uh, Sims G3s. Um, they're very expensive uh, with some corker boots, which aren't on the cheap side either, but I fish all the time. So uh, I spent the extra money for that extra bit of comfort. Um, I have another pair uh, that I got on Amazon that I used to wear all the time. They were a hundred bucks. Um, uh, and those work great too, or, or as you've seen on the channel, I'll, I'll put a link to the video. I, I um, uh, did a review of some Runkle waders. I think those are 60 bucks. Those will get the job done. So if you really want to get some waders and try that out, uh, uh, there's options for you in every price range. So um, uh, you don't have to have them, but uh, if you want, uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't give it a try. Now, where to find the fish? Um, there are tons of lakes up there, streams, rivers, uh, everywhere up there, which is awesome. And they all hold fish. Um, uh, I typically uh, like to fish the, the lakes more than the, than the streams and the creeks, just because, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm after the trophy size fish. I want, I want a, a bigger fish, a bigger fight, uh, but that's just me. Um, uh, do you? Um, lots of guys love uh, catching uh, the, the smaller fish in the creeks. They, they really enjoy it, and I enjoy it too. I just prefer uh, going after the big dogs in the lakes, but uh, uh, to each his own and, and, and fish the way you want to fish. Uh, but where, what I usually tell people, uh, and, and the most, the simplest information I can give, and it, honestly, this is what we do, is we, we look for moving water. If there's water coming into the lake or going out of the lake. Um, typically, the inlets where the water's coming into the lake is what you want. Um, uh, the water's going to be colder, um, and it provides a food source for the fish. So, um, the fish are going to be around there typically, uh, uh, mainly because they want to feed and secondarily because uh, they, can, they can get in that perfect temperature zone uh, uh, where the waters, uh, they can get in, in whatever depth, that cold water's coming in, so they, they might be low or high, however they want it, but it's almost like air conditioning for them, especially in the, in the summer months, because um, even though it is, the water's still cold up there, it, it gets warm to them, at least to, not to their perfect uh, liking, and uh, uh, they want to get it in that perfect zone, so that's why they're gonna be by that moving water. Uh, outlets, um, the structure has to be right because um, uh, the water will move. It usually will pick up a little bit of steam as it's going out of the lake down into the creek. Um, but there has to be a, a right structure for the fish to be hanging out there. Um, usually a deeper pool right before the water starts to move or as the water is moving. Um, uh, typically in outlets um, that are more shallow, you can see in there. You usually can see the fish if they're there. Um, if you don't see any and you make a few casts, don't see any followers, probably not any there. Um, uh, but, but don't give up on outlets. We always go and check outlets because uh, uh, they can be there. So um, uh, any moving water, even uh, trickles of water, you'll see natural springs sometimes going into lakes. And it's not a rushing river. It's something you can, you can even stand in even without waders on. It's just a little bit of cold water going in. That changes the, the water temperature in that area. And especially if there's a drop off there and there's a little bit of, of cold water trickling in, uh, there are fish holding there, I'm, I'm sure of it. So anywhere you can find moving water, uh, start fishing there, give it a few casts, uh, throw out some bait, see what's what, because that's uh, honestly exactly what we do. All right, now it's time for my favorite part of the video, practical application. I'm gonna show you all the techniques I use up there, whether it's bait and weight, mini jigs, spoons, uh, fishing under a bobber, whatever it is, I'll show you the rigs, and then I'll show you uh, the techniques in action at, at different lakes. So, uh, so let's see how we do. All right, guys, here's the, the, the basic setup I use when I'm fishing the, the creeks or the, the small rivers uh, up there. Um, uh, basically, just a, just a small split shot and, uh, you know, about a foot a liter. Um, and then down to a, a small hook. Like, here's a number 10 uh, mosquito hook or you use a small treble hook. And usually just any kind of bait, um, like power bait. You got your, uh, your salmon eggs work good up there in different colors. Uh, night crawlers, these aren't night crawlers just to represent them, or even, even mice tails um, will work up there. And, and basically what you do is um, use as little as weight as possible and because you want the current to carry your rig or your bait 
down to where the fish are. So you cast down uh, the creek at an angle and uh, uh, raise and lower your rod tip. So basically this brings the weight up and out of the, the pebbles and the rocks and allows your bait to keep moving down the creek with the current. And if, uh, say, uh, this isn't enough weight, you just add more of these little split shots until you get the right combination where you're not getting uh, hung up in the rocks, uh, but your bait's getting down uh, to the bottom where the fish are at and you're getting bit. So super simple technique, uh, and it's really, really effective. Uh, and here's some, uh, some video footage of uh, this technique in action. All right, show you the rig we're using. Got a couple of uh, light, small split shots there. Down to a number 10 hook and just a third of a inflated night crawler. No scent, just throwing it out there in the current. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's all we do. Go, bro. Nice little bow. Little aerial action. Now, what did you have on that? Night crawler? Crawler, yeah. <laughs> no scent. Probably a small piece. Yep. Yeah, I need to be putting too much garlic on mine right now. All right, uh, this next one is the mainstay in uh, SoCal trout fishing, the good old uh, Carolina rig. Uh, half ounce egg sinker, Carolina keeper, or a split shot. Uh, a good uh, foot, foot and a half liter down to a number 10 mosquito hook or an 18 treble hook is what I usually like to do. Uh, and then just you just cast it out beyond where you can't see into the water and, and uh, set it up and hope a fish comes by and eats it. But uh, baits up there, uh, same as down here. Your, your, your power baits work good. Uh, inflated night crawlers, mice tails. Um, you can, certain areas, you know, if there's a little bit of current, you can even lay a, uh, a salmon egg on the bottom up there uh, uh sometimes the fish will see it they'll see it in the gravel and come pick it up uh that's one difference that uh, you won't see too often in southern california uh but up 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 in the sierras a little bit more common it can happen uh, i prefer to always have my bait floating uh, uh it's just me uh, uh i feel you get a lot better of a shot uh that way but uh especially if you're out in a creek but uh, uh the carolina rig is exactly the same as down here just play with your leader links casting distance until you get bit until you find them um, so here's some uh, some footage of this this technique in action up there so hope you enjoy it got a, a quarter ounce egg sinker carolina keeper about a foot and a half liter down a number 10 mosquito hook and uh golden state fishing mice tail right there i believe that one's called uh, slimer it's uh, chartreuse and white so let's see if we can get some out Nice little trout. We stop rolling around in the mud. All right, this next one's an oldie buddy goodie, but uh, 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 outstanding way to catch trout uh, uh, using a bobber. So you just get a, any type of uh, bobber or a float, attach it to your line, leave about, usually I like between a uh, three and a five foot leader. And uh, lots of times I don't use any weight and don't use a floating bait and throw it on out there. If you're gonna use a uh, power bait or one of these floating mice tails, um, just get yourself a split shot and put it on about halfway or however, whatever depth you want this to, uh, to float at and uh, the, uh, the floating bait will only go up as high as that, that split shot, and that split shot will hold it down there, uh, and the fish will hit it just the same. So uh, when fishing these bobbers, you don't have to use bait that doesn't float. If you use a floating bait, just put a little split shot on there, and you're good to go. Um, uh, with this, uh, usually it's for some uh, fishing up close, uh, not more than 30 feet out. Um, and, and I usually don't like to cast as far out as I, as I can still see my bobber. 
because <laughs> uh, it's, it's a lot less effective if you can't see the bobber go down because lots of times uh, this bobber them pulling it down isn't going to set the hook on themselves and uh, they usually have a harder time swallowing it uh, so usually you lip hook them a lot so you got to see that bobber to uh, to get a good hood set right when that thing goes down because uh, you don't have very much time uh, but uh, here's some some footage of uh, me using that technique uh, up in the Sierras and uh, uh, very effective hope you like it there we go little bitty fella we got a little guy yep there you go. little bitty fella All right, now for uh, uh, my favorite way to fish up there, and the way the way I like to get them and have the most success with is is with uh, moving baits. You, you know, mini jigs, minnows, and spoons. Um, uh, I seem to have the best luck with that, and uh, it seems to catch me bigger fish on average. But uh, uh, typically, the only difference between up there and down here in Southern California is is color selection. Uh, as you can see, most of these are a little bit more on the natural side. However, there are certain times when they don't care and they'll want say like big stick here which is as you can see is bright orange and, and uh, uh, yellow or uh, you know some of these real bright ones um, uh, but typically these are what I stick with uh, because the water's so clear you usually want a more natural presentation but it's not a hard and fast rule it's not a hundred percent so so please don't only take natural colors up with you take a few brights because sometimes that's what they want um, uh, and typically when I'm fishing the, either the mini jigs or the minnows, I'm using a 1 16th, uh, uh, weight or a ball head or a jig head. Um, uh, because that's typically you're fishing deeper water and typically you need to get the, uh, your baits down to where the fish are, especially if you're fishing in moving water. Um, there are times as you've seen in the videos and I'll probably show in some clips where I have gone down to a 32nd, 1 32nd ball head and fish these minnows. Uh, and, and did it real slow on the edge of the current and sometimes that works but typically typically you're going to want a 1 16th especially if you're just starting out uh, it's a lot easier to throw it's heavier um, uh, and you'll have a, a, a much more uh, success working and a lot less frustration because also up in the Sierras there's a lot of wind it's the the mountains the wind comes up every afternoon no matter what lake you're at and uh, uh, throwing a 30 second mini jig can be tough in the wind uh, also with the uh, the spoons, uh, uh, these are the more natural, some of the more natural colors, but this one, uh, Morning Glory is one that does well up there, uh, and, and you can see it's pretty bright. <laughs> so um, uh, typically, like I said, I like to stick with the naturals, but uh, 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 sometimes they want it bright and, and, and real loud and in their face. Um, but I'll have links to uh, uh, how to fish mini jigs and, and also how to fish uh, spoons. Uh, where I go way in, more in depth on, on rods, reels, line you need because it gets it starts getting, especially with the mini jigs, it gets a lot more specialized, uh, especially if you're going to get into it. The spoons are a lot easier to throw. You can throw them on, on just about any trout rig, uh, so they're a little bit easier to fish. But uh, uh, here's some clips uh, showing you uh, all these techniques in action up there. Hope you enjoy it. Come on. Oh, he popped off. Skilled release. On the fire locust right there. And that caramel apple uh, two inch minnow. Oh, 
A nice healthy one. There you go. He just fired up. Yeah, it might be a four or five. What? Yeah, look at that. Oh, that is a nice one. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies and gents, there you have it. Uh, uh, hope hope you got some good information out of there. And and uh, uh, like I, I might have said earlier, um, fish how you want to fish. Um, the, the way I like to fish and I fish with Esteban and a lot of the Golden State guys a lot, um, uh, uh, we grind all day, but that's, that's, what's fun to us. We, we go to one lake, we make a few casts, we don't catch any, we go to the next lake. We, we hike all the way to the back. We make a few casts, catch a few, then we, we leave there. We go to another lake and we're doing that from sun up to sundown. And it's, it's exhausting, but it's fun. That's what we enjoy to do. Um, uh, we like the hunt. And we like the the the, the excitement of, of finally getting onto a good fish uh, after all that work. That's that's what our thing is. But if, if you like to sit around and bait and wait, um, uh, have at it. More power to you. I, I enjoy that too sometimes. Um, so so fish the way you want to fish. You don't have to fish exactly the way I'm I, I'm explaining it. Um, uh, uh, there are certainly more than one way to, to catch a fish. <laughs> Um, so if you got a better way, absolutely, uh, uh, do that and let me know. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, here, here's just some basic, uh, uh, things that I've noticed and things that I do that work for me. Hopefully they'll work for you. And with that, if you want any of the Golden State Fishing custom baits I use, there's a hyperlink in this video's description, as well as a QR code right here. If you, uh, type in code CSPANKER at checkout, you get 10% off. Likewise, with the RHA spoons I use, there's a QR code right here. It'll take you right to the site. If you type in code get hooked, you get 10% off. And with the uh, Waterland sunglasses, once again, hit that uh, QR code. Uh, if you make any purchases, type in code CSPANKER at checkout and you get 15% off. So make sure you check those out. And with that, uh, I've got several more uh, Sierra videos on, on deck. Uh, I got to edit up. I uh, got Capel's Lake up there where I caught some nice Mackinac. Um, uh, and then local stuff, uh, Green Valley. Uh, I'm going to head out to Big Bear very soon. Um, uh, God, where else? Oh, Gregory. I, I've been meaning to get out to Gregory probably on a, on a float tube or my yak uh, and see what's doing out there, especially with the heat. Um, see if those fish are holding out deep, which I think they are. So um, uh, lots of stuff to, to come. And uh, obviously more Sierra trips in the, in the coming weeks. We'll be back up there again. Hopefully you, uh, you stick around to see it, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Tie lines.